So as we talk about photosynthesis, let's focus on the first major group of reactions called the light reactions. And these are aptly named because these are driven by light energy. All right. So chlorophyll is the key. This is going to be um, our primary pigment for um, capturing light energy. Now, if we look at chlorophyll, we have to talk about a little bit more about chemistry. So when that chlorophyll absorbs energy from a photon, um, it goes to an excited state. And that, what that means is that literally the electrons in the atoms, in the, sh in the orbiting each atom in their shells, um, will move to a higher energy shell. And that energy then ultimately is dissipated, and as that electron falls down to its ground state, that dissipated energy is released as either a photon, as we see in fluorescence, or heat energy. And so when you excite chlorophyll that's been isolated, not in the biological system where it can shuttle that energy around, um, it literally glows blood red. So you can see that here in, um, not super um, well, but you can see that red uh, liquid in the jar, and that's actually chlorophyll that is um, fluorescing. Now, the photosystems, there's going to be two photosystems that we're going to deal with. That's going to be a reaction center and surrounded by light harvesting complexes. So we've got, again, this antenna array system that's funneling energy um, to what's called a primary electron acceptor. And that's going to be what's called the special pair of chlorophyll A um, that's going to actually lose an electron to start an electron transport chain. So again, we have solar energy, sunlight energy, that's going to drive the redox chemistry um, of photosynthesis. So when we look at now at this photosystem embedded in the thylakoid membrane, we can see a photon coming in from the upper left. The energy um, is exciting uh, the chlorophyll and the antenna complexes, and that energy then is handed off until ultimately it's handed off to the special pair in the reaction center complex. So again, this is all held in place by proteins and mediated by proteins. Now that special pair is set up in such a way that when it becomes excited, the electron, as it leaps up, leaps up to a higher energy um, state, actually leaves the molecules. Right? So it is actually oxidized. Right? So that a, a reaction center complex actually is going to rip the electron away from the special pair, and that is an electron that is a very high energy electron, and we can use it in an electron transport chain to ultimately pump protons. All right? So when we look at that in the context of the thylakoid membrane in the entire system, we can see here on the left light coming in, and we have photosystem two. There are two photosystems that we're going to deal with. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, and that's going to drive then a pathway of those electrons, ultimately from water, then through major protein complexes, ultimately to make a proton gradient, to make ATP, and then that high energy electron is, will find its way to NADP to make NADPH. All right, so that's going to be our reducing power. Those are then immediately used in the stroma in the Calvin cycle. So this is a great slide to study. We're going to come back to this again and again. So again, there are two types of photosystems that you've noticed in that um, entire scheme. So we ultimately need two photons to drive an electron through the system. So the first photosystem that's actually going to engage is actually photosystem two. So you're like, well, why wouldn't they call it photosystem one? Well, as you work to discover these things, you kind of work backwards. And so the first photosystem to be found was the second photosystem in the process. So photosystem two is the starting point, and that's going to have, um, it's also called P680, because the special pair um, absorbs the light best at 680 nanometers. So we can look at this other picture of uh, photosynthesis. You can see photosystem two here labeled very clearly. That is where we're going to start and hand off electrons ultimately to get to photosystem one, where they're going to need another photon to work. Photosystem 1, then, is at a slightly different wavelength. It's going to absorb at 700 nanometers, so it's called P700. So you can see that photosystem two, or, sorry, photosystem 1 further down in the range, but it needs another photon to um, kind of push, give a little boost to that electron as it moves through the process. So the light reactions are basically a giant electron transport chain that is driven by light energy. So we talk about linear electron flow, which is the primary pathway 
that electrons are going to take through photosynthesis, ending up with the generation of ATP and AVPH. So the order of the complexes um, is a little bit uh, more specific when we talk about photosynthesis. And I want you to know photosystem 2, plastoquinone, cytochrome complex, plastocyanin, photosystem 1, ferrodoxin, and NADP reductase. In cellular respiration, we talked about complex 1, 2, 3, and 4. It's a little bit easier um, at a general level, but these I want you to know. So let's walk through the process. I'm um, starting with a photon that hits a pigment. Its energy is passed along to the special pair in photosystem 2 at P, the P680. That P680 electron is transferred to a, what's called the primary electron acceptor in photosystem 2. Okay? So the key to this, though, is that when I rip an electron away from P680, it's, it's been oxidized. It's really It's been ionized. And so it really wants an electron to kind of replace the one it lost. And that creates an incredibly strong red oxidizing agent. So that oxidizing agent that is the P680 plus is so strong, it can actually rip electrons away from the oxygen in water. So that's where we're actually generating the oxygen from photosynthesis in that very first step. So as P680 becomes oxidized, it actually rips electrons away from water, which water is abundant in the cell, right? It's the media in which all this stuff is floating. And it produces protons and O2, right? So that's where we're producing our first byproduct of oxygen. And that's how P680 is kind of reset, ready to hit, get hit with another um, photon of light to be um, oxidized again. So those electrons that it passes off now kind of fall down a redox gradient, just like we did in the electron transport chain of cellular respiration. So as it moves from protein to protein from redox reaction to redox reaction, we're going to pump protons across the membrane, right? So the cytochrome complex is really going to be one of the major proton pumps. It's going to generate a P, um, uh, proton motor force, PMF, across the thylakoid membrane, um, acidic to the inside, so we're actually pumping protons into the lumen of the thylakoid, um, and that's going to be used to drive um, the chloroplast ATP synthase, which we'll come back to that in just a second. Now, those electrons then, as they move on to plastocyanin, are going to be ultimately going to be the replacement electrons for the electrons in um, the special pair of photosystem 1. So P, the P700, when they get hit with a photon of light, it's going to drive that electron up to a primary acceptor of photosystem 1, and then the replacement electrons come from plastocyanin. So we're going to need, that's going to continue the electron flow into photosystem 1. Now from the primary acceptor of photosystem 1, they're going to be handed off to ferrodoxin and then transferred to NADP reductase. And so that is where we're going to use that high energy electron to make NADPH, again, reducing power. Just like we derived reducing power from the high energy of the food that we eat, here we're driving it ultimately from sunlight energy. The NADPH then is available for reactions in the light independent um, set of reactions, or what's called the Calvin cycle. So if we look at that here, that entire reaction here, we can see um, in photosystem one, primary electron acceptor, ferrodoxin, then to NADP reductase, and we generate NADPH. Okay? So again, it comes back to this idea of a PMF, a proton motor force, a gradient of protons across a membrane. So again, we're going to acidify the lumen, and then the chloroplast ATP synthase is going to be the, the pathway through which that gradient can be dissipated. So now you see at the bottom of this slide, there's the ATP synthase in the thylakoid. Those protons want to go where they're not. They want to go from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration, i.e. from the inside of the thylakoid to the outside of the thylakoid. And if you give them a path to go down, they will go down it, and that is usable energy. I'm tapping that gradient. That ATP synthase is going to spin just like the mitochondrial ATP synthase, and force a phosphate group onto ADP to make it ATP. Now that ATP might be like, oh great, you know, that's it, we're good to go. Well, we're not. Because this system doesn't work when the light's not on. And so you lose your source of ATP as soon as you moved into the dark, and you're not going to survive. So the ATP that we generate from the light reactions is going to be funneled immediately, as you can see here, the air goes right into the Calvin cycle. 
We're going to use that to make sugar, and then sugar can be broken down at will in the mitochondria to make ATP as the organism needs it. So don't be fooled. Plants have mitochondria too. Cellular respiration is fairly universal for eukaryotic organisms. Photosynthesis is not. It's only for the autotrophs that do photosynthesis. But the way photosynthesis works is the ATP generated here goes directly into making sugars, all right, into the Calvin cycle, which we'll talk about next. Now, before we go into that, though, I want to talk about one more note in um, the electron transport chain here. It has the capacity to do what's called cyclic electron flow. So this is when you're going to only use photosystem 1 to produce ATP and not any EPH. And you might say, well, I don't understand this. Why would you do that? You're going to generate a surplus of ATP, and you're not going to produce that reducing power. Well, it's not entirely clear, but based on the evidence, it su suggests that plants that don't have or are unable to do cyclic electron flow, they do very poorly in high light conditions, which suggests that this is a um, light protective mechanism. So what do you have going on here? You have the photons coming into photosystem 1, going to the primary electron acceptor, and ferrodoxin is then reduced, but instead of ferrodoxin traveling to the NADP reductase, it travels back to the cytochrome complex, because these are mobile electron carriers. The ferrodoxin interacts with the cytochrome complex and then sends that electron through plastocyanin back to photosystem 1. Well, this works great to, for our proton pump, and we can keep generating ATP, but again, we don't have the reducing power to make sugars. Um, so this seems to be, again, a, kind of a phytoprotective mechanism. And so I want you to be aware of it, but don't worry about it too much for now.